My name is Stefan Deschain, and I'm the host of The Nature's Living Show. And my name is Samantha Graham, and I'm the podcast's producer. This is the YouTube version of the podcast. We make it available here for those who prefer this format. But podcasts are much more convenient when you subscribe and listen on a podcast app. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, Deezer, Overcast, and many, many other places. Please visit naturistlivingshow.com for more information. But for now, enjoy this YouTube version of our podcast. On this episode of the Naturist Living Show, the Naturist and Nudist Real Estate Market. This episode of the Naturist Living Show is brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. At Bear Oaks, we offer traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Free your body, free your mind. www.bearoaks.ca Welcome, dear listener, to episode number 61 in November 2013 of the Naturist Living Show. My name is Stéphane Deschain, and I'm your host for this podcast and the owner of Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. And this marks five years since I posted the very first podcast in November of 2008. Five years. As I've said before, I never thought this would last this long, but... While it takes a lot of time, um, I'm certainly not running out of topics, and I'm still enjoying doing it, so I guess we're going to keep going. I keep receiving a lot of reader feedback, and as I always say, I really enjoy getting them and receiving them, and uh, while I may be a little slow from time to time in responding, I do read them all eventually and uh, try to respond. I think I I do respond to all of them, unless I missed some, or so some go into the spam folder. Occasionally, I get some that I think will be of particular interest to not just myself, but to you, my dear listener. So um, I have a few uh, for this episode that I want to read. The first one I got um, from Joe, uh, Joe Gratton, and he says, Thank you for the podcast about rape and nudism. It explains to a T how a 35-year-old male victim, brutally raped, can become a social nudist. I never told anyone until I also realized, one and a half years ago, I needed to do something drastic. Social nudism was my personal choice of therapy. Then I also decided to see a counselor after my first non-landed travel family-friendly social. The counselor thought I was nuts, but also understood my reasoning if it worked in my favor. If it did help me take down so many walls I had created and that have been reinforced to the point, so I thought, they would never come down. Emotional freedom, self-esteem, talk eye to eye, stop hiding in the corner of a room, nude people, men and even women trust people again, etc., etc., etc. I used to love swimming and sunning around a beaver dam when I was 11 to 13 years old. However, at age 14, it took me an additional 14 years to 28 to get back to my bare roots. I found a new spot hidden in the woods, and until this past summer, I was still using the same one in spring and autumn. An additional 21 years, 49, to finally become who I always was and never was able to be. A nudist, not a rape victim. Last summer, June 2013, was my first nudist resort in northwest Vermont, coming from southern Maine. A full week of no clothing without a care in the world about fear. I can still hide in the corner, but that is when I am in a non-nudist setting. When everyone else is nude, or they accept my being nude at that moment, I feel free in so many ways. When I remove that layer of clothing, I also remove the thick layer of discomfort and fear beneath it. 
I will embrace nudism for the rest of my life and fight to keep nudism safe for everyone, especially rape victim. Bear hugs, Joe Grattan. Um, a very powerful uh, testament from him to his experience and how naturism can help you. And uh, I did, uh, there was a podcast where I talked about uh, people being abused and interviewed people being abused. And obviously it touched uh, uh, a sympathetic chord with him. And so I wrote to him because I never read these without asking permission um, and asked whether I could uh, read it and use his name. And he replied uh, quite enthusiastically. This is what he said. Thanks for your reply. Hell yes, you can read this on the next podcast or any other thereafter. I have had others listen to that part of the podcast as well. It helps them understand why or how a rape victim of 35 years can become a social nudist and become a one-year survivor. Now I am completely open about my life even to strangers. Though nudists and those that at least accept nudism are the easiest. Now to take my new self and intertwine it with my friends and family still around from my old life. They were part of whom I put behind my walls, and they are the hardest to let back in. Though I had a great chat with my sister November 9th, that is a huge step in fixing a rocky history we have had. And I openly spoke with my daughter November 10th, and opened up about a lot. I am not the same person I was two years ago, and it all started with my wanting to get back to my bare roots and enjoying being nude with nature. Having the strength to get to my first indoor nude social has introduced me to a part of me that was gone for so long. Nudism was one closet I needed to open. Rape was another. Now I am on my way to open every closet I have with a secret behind it. I have listened to every one of your podcasts. I never seem to get to the latest one until a month or so behind. But when I am notified of another, I make sure I listen to the oldest one I haven't listened to. Well, and thank you again, Joe. Um, that's incredibly rewarding to hear that something that we've done on this show, something I said, something somebody else said on one of our hosts could help others. And uh, I mean, that is why we uh, do this. This is why we promote naturism. It's not just a little recreational activity. I mean, it's a true... Uh, true vocation is a true way of saving people. And I'm, I'm glad... I'm glad we could help. Another email I received, uh, the person who wrote it asked to remain anonymous. They say, Dear Bear Oaks, Ever since I was a young boy, I have enjoyed being nude. I can't explain why, and I don't remember when it started. I just know I have. I always said the fact that I like to be nude because I thought it was weird, and I grew up wondering if there were other people like me. I didn't discover there were nudists till the one day I stumbled across a podcast on iTunes of an interview with Stéphane Deschain, who was talking about naturism. Uh, this is the interview I did uh, before I started this podcast. I did a podcast uh, with the FCN, uh, general questions about naturism. Um, it's still available, and there's a link, in fact, on the uh, show notes um, at the very top that links to that original podcast. But getting back to... Uh, but getting back to his email. I listened to that podcast several times. It was a relief to finally find out that there were other people who enjoyed being nude. It wasn't just me. And there were places people go to just be in the nude. I now wanted to go to one of these places and found out there was a resort nearby called Cypress Cove. However, I was not able to go because I was too young and I never wanted to tell anyone I like to be nude. It was, and still is, embarrassing for me to tell people, even my family. This is something I'm working on. When I got older and had my own car, I still could not go to Cypress Cove because I was a single male. Just this year, I married a wonderful young woman who accepts me completely for who I am and the fact that I like to be nude. She also likes to be nude around the house occasionally, and we both like to sleep nude. After a lot of talking about it, my wife and I finally went to Cypress Cove for one night at the beginning of July this year. It was a wonderful, relaxing experience. I was nude the entire time. My wife preferred wearing a towel most of the time and says it will take a while for her to get used to it. But one day, she hopes that she will be able to be fully nude with me. 
The only problem I had was I kept getting small erections. Not because of any sexual thoughts, but because of my excitement of finally being there. Not sure what to do about that, but hope this happening will go away if we visit often. That said, we both plan to go back again for a visit. It was an incredibly relaxing and, and very freeing. With my story now told for the first time, by the way, and me expecting that I am a nudist, I have some questions that I have been wondering about, and I figured this may just be the place to get them answered. My first question is about where our liking of nudity comes from. I have wondered if liking to be nude is hereditary. Though we never discuss nudity in our home, I do know that my father likes to sleep in the nude, and I wondered if I got it from him. My wife is the same way. Is nudity in our genes? My second question is about telling others you like to be nude, especially our roommate. My wife and I own a house, and to help pay the bills, we have a roommate. It would be nice to be able to tell her that I enjoy being nude so that I didn't have to get dressed when she is home. We love our roommate very much and don't want her to go anywhere. But even after doing lots of searching, I have not found a good way of to tell her we are nudists. Any suggestions? Thank you for listening to my story. And thank you for this great podcast of information you really can't get anywhere else. I look forward to hearing back from you soon. So my reply to him was that I would simply uh, give the answers on the show. Um, I thought it'd be a little bit, uh, it'd be relevant to a number of people, but also I thought I could get into a little bit more detail. So the first question about liking nudity. Personally, I think it's completely natural. Um, we've done a number of shows where we talk about uh, what, the, what is the natural way. I always say that uh, the obsession we have with wearing clothes, the, the fact we are embarrassed, uh, ashamed, and even are offended by our own image is, is normal, because that's the way it is in society, but it's not natural at all. Um, naturism, ethical naturism, I've, as I've discussed in one of the shows, um, is, is about finding our new our way again. So I think it's, it's, it is in our genes, I think it is hereditary, but I think we all have it. Our, our skin, our body was designed to be outdoor, to breathe. That's why it feels so good. That's why you enjoy it. Um, th that's why you get these minor erections, uh, as you said. It, it, when it's new, when it's, it feels so good, that's a fairly natural thing to happen. And I suspect they're not huge shall we say, flying the flag kind of erections, but um, just this, this kind of feel-good thing that happens. And yeah, you do get used to it. It always feels good, but it's never quite as uh, extremely unusual and exciting as it is the first time when you finally feel free for the first time. So yeah, I think it's completely natural. I think it's hereditary for your wife uh, as well. She, will, uh, she likes to be nude where at this point it feels natural, and normal because of what society has taught her. But eventually she will learn to be the way she was when she was a small child. Because I have never met a small child, like I mean a really small child, when before they've ever had a chance to be told that their body was shameful or that being nude was bad. I've never met a child at that stage who doesn't like to run around naked and just is full of joy and glee. Um, if you have an infant or a baby and you take their diaper off, you can see how excited they are to not have the diaper on. I would be too if I had to wear a diaper. So I do think it's completely natural. The second question is about telling others. I keep uh, playing with an idea of how to tell people uh, being an actual topic for a podcast. Um, I, th I think there's, the key to telling people is, first of all, to be very uh, sure of yourself and believe in it. If when you tell somebody you sound like you're ashamed or embarrassed, they'll hear that. They'll sense that. And that'll give them an impression that what you're doing is something wrong. So you have to be very sure of yourself and you have to know the answers to all the typical questions you get. And uh, those questions you can find uh, on a lot of Nature's website. You can find the frequently asked questions on the Barrocks website, especially the first time questions, for example. If you're dealing with children, there's a whole section that we have on children and naturism. Um, if you know the answers to those questions and you understand them, don't just memorize them, then you should feel pretty confident you can have a discussion with anybody and you can't really lose the argument about whether it's right or wrong unless somebody defaults to something very subjective and vague like, 
I just think it's wrong, or it's against my morals. Um, as to where those morals come from, that's an even bigger discussion. But logically, there's really, it's not against m- most religions that we can find out. Uh, it, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I also believe in not making too big of a deal of it. If you, you know, if you took a bunch of people or your roommate and you sat down, he says, sit down, I have something to tell you. And you both sat across from her and you very seriously said, we are naturists. You're making too big of a thing. Naturism or being nude in around the house is is normal. Um, it, 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 a lot of people are nude around the house. And what you're doing is, well, perhaps not normal, normal for you, normal in your house, but definitely natural. And it's just to be more subtle about it. Uh, one of the ways that I've suggested people is, you know, if you get a mug, I have, we have a mug at Bear Oaks, but maybe there's a mug at your local club or a mug from Cypress Cove. And it says nudist on it. Ours has little cartoons of uh, nude people on it. And you have your coffee in it. That will start the conversation. If somebody else starts the conversation, then it's it's not as big of a deal. Then you can just say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the place I go. And then you can start talking about it. And then that could lead your way into, well, you know, what we'd really like to do is be able to just be nude in the house. You don't have to be. Do you think, you know, do you think you'd be okay with that? We haven't done it because we don't want to, you know, offend you or bother you. But uh, would you mind or something like that? I had a conversation like that with my neighbor um, because, because they can see in our backyard. A uh, very casual conversation. Of course, it's a lot easier. I just park a truck in the driveway that says Bear Oaks Family Nature's Park. Um, and uh, it's fairly well known because I'm in the media. So the conversation is, is always starting as a result. Uh, but most people are like, yeah, whatever, that's fine. If you ask a question, you ask their permission, how can they say no, really? You know, it, it's it's fairly, um, it's such a, nobody wants to sound like a prude and it doesn't seem like a big deal and they'll get used to it fairly quickly. So that would be my recommendation. Um, and, and of course, I believe that you should talk about a philosophy, not just being nude, although that's nice and it's comfortable. But if it's about helping people, if it's about uh, making people feel better about themselves, it's about, um, you know, building up self-esteem and all, all that stuff we've talked about in so many shows about what ethical naturism is about, then it's a philosophy and it's a movement. Um, and that means even more because of the morality and because of the ethical aspect that's involved in ethical naturism. So I think that's how you should approach um, this kind of situation. My next email is a long one, but I still thought uh, you might enjoy listening to it. Plus, I wanted to give the answer to this one as well on the show. So, hello, Stefan. While looking on YouTube, I came across your podcast, Christianity and Naturism. I was impressed by the show. I subscribed to and downloaded the entire series from iTunes. As of the beginning to compose this email, I have listened to almost all 60 of these podcasts, many more than once within two weeks' time. While listening... An idea for a podcast came to mind based on a book that I have recently read, The Power of Touch. It is a book about our needs as humans for the comforting touch of others. She explains this needs from birth till death. An infant's need for touch to thrive, and without this touch, how they fail to grow and thrive normally. As teenagers, without hugs from their parents, developing low morals and self-esteems. As adults, the lives of singles are on average five years shorter than those who are married. An elderly who pine away and die for loneliness and the lack of touch of it from another. The reason I thought this would be a good topic is that a friend of mine that has recently expressed an interest in naturism, and while talking to him about it, he asked, were we allowed to touch or hug one another? I told him that because of the breaking down of barriers and the speed at which friendliness and friendships develop, that on my first visit to a naturist park, by the end of the weekend I had had around six women that were nude come up to me and give me a hug, that I don't even remember their names. In the Bible it is written, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. It is also written, Greet one another with a holy kiss. I have been in churches most of my life, but I get a hug at a nature's club faster than any church I've ever been to, and the only people I get a hug from at a church are a few people that I have known for a while. The author explains this need for touch as a skin hunger. Before reading this book, I recognize this need in me for nothing more at a nature's club or anywhere else than to have a hug from someone of the opposite sex. I did not care about her looks, her weight, or her age. I just needed a hug. 
because of the openness and friendliness that naturists have a new in a nudist or naturist club is the best place to have that need met it is kind of sad that churches aren't as friendly as naturists by having this as a topic many non-naturists that are reluctant to try it because of their fear that naturism is sexual will see that the most coveted physical contact that a naturist has is nothing more than a hug from another human being it may also show others that suffer from skin hunger whether they are married or not that they can have their need for human touch met at a speed not possible in any other environment. I know that there are some people or personalities that don't care for an aggressiveness on the part of others to just come up to them and hug them. I have a neighbor that is so uncomfortable with public displays of affection, it is all he can stand to just hold hands with his wife while in public. Yet he does not understand that his discomfort with his daughters wanting to hug him has caused them to have their skin hunger needs met by sneaking out at night and eventually leaving home unmarried at a young age. Naturism could have been beneficial for him and them. Many people have skin hunger but are reluctant to make their needs for a hug known for fear of rejection. Some are uncomfortable with hugs, but others are more than willing and happy to hug another. And uh, I won't continue reading the rest of his email because he gets into more detail about the book. Um, but I think you get the idea. And yes, I I think most people, if they get it over their issues that they may have with intimacy, enjoy a hug. I mean, there's nothing better than snuggling up to your partner in bed um, and, and with nothing on uh, and just feeling skin to skin. Um, it's... Uh, I remember with my uh, my infant boys when they were born and having them uh, their their on their their skin against mine on my bare chest, they feeling the breathing as they were sleeping happily. It seemed to calm them to have touch, and there's lots of evidence that that's good. So, absolutely, touch is is important, and a lot of people are surprised with the idea that you might hug in a naturist environment, um, and. It is if you are used to the fact that the only person whose skin you feel against yours is somebody you have some sort of sexual relationship with. And for a lot of people in a textile world, that's the way it is. Um, but when you get used to it, um, there's lots of people that I hug that I know. But you do have to be careful um, because, again, it is a t social taboo. Uh, even when you're dressed, particularly in the North American Anglophone culture, um, It is something that can make people uncomfortable, and that leads to suggestions or charges of harassment or sexual harassment. And uh, we had that last summer. We had a, a young man who was hugging uh, some young women a little too often or too frequently, or somehow something made them uncomfortable, and uh, they complained. And so you do have to be careful and make sure you get permission, make sure you have that relationship with the person. But once both people are over that, it certainly is a wonderful feeling. So hi, Felicity. I'm not reaching you in New York today. No. Hi, Stefan. I am actually in Palm Springs, California. Wow. What's there? Yeah, we're at Terracotta Inn, this um, little nudist resort in Palm Springs. Well, I've heard of it, but not everybody uh, who's listening might have. So can you describe it a little bit for everyone? Yeah. Um, it's actually a couple's only resort. I would describe it actually like a hotel, but like with a community feeling because we actually had Thanksgiving dinner today because it's also Thanksgiving. Uh, yes. Happy yeah, Thanksgiving. So, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, I guess you got you celebrated it a little while ago, but yeah, in Canada, it's um, in October. October. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, they have um, Mary Claire cooked up Thanksgiving dinner today. It was really nice, really good food. And Um, but, you know, as opposed to, to regular, like, hotel, I, everybody kind of got a, got a table, and we all ate together, and, you know, everybody gets to know each other, you know, people talk to each other, it's different than just being, going to a hotel with a pool, so it's this cute little place, I think they have, like, only 17 rooms, um, they have a heated pool, a jacuzzi, uh, little communal areas. And beautiful weather. <laughs> oh, that's why, well, yes, of course. Palm Springs, always yeah. beautiful. And so what brought yeah. you there? Well, um, Jordan actually had some business, some other business in L.A., so 
since he had to be there on Wednesday, we decided to make a whole trip out of it and like come for the for the week. Nice, nice. And are you just gonna stay there, or are you gonna visit in the area? I think we're gonna stay here overnight, and then we also might check out Desert Sun, um, which is also in Palm Springs. Have you heard of that place? I have, yes. Yeah, I've never been to any of them. I've never been to Palm Springs at all, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is my first time in California, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I'm not leaving because it's really warm here, and New York is really cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been very cold very early this year, hasn't it? Yeah, and there's some all kinds of crazy weather going on, too. I think we were lucky to get out the day before it all really started to come in. So, um, what else is on your mind? What do you, what what have you been blogging or thinking or talking about these days? Um, well, only just uh, only Jordan just actually wrote a new blog post um, that we haven't posted yet um, because we've actually been talking about selfies. Selfies. Uh, well, that's yeah. that's a new word for me. I, I mean, I've heard it before, but it's I've only I think heard about it in the last year. Yeah. Well, I guess everybody knows about it now. I mean. Um, I guess it's been around for a while, um, but the Oxford Dictionary actually chose the word selfie as their word of the year. I don't even know they chose the word every year, but now I know because it's selfie. <laughs> and, um, you know, some people are, love it, some people hate it, I guess, but and some people just hate selfies, you know, people like rag on selfies, but... You know, in the nudist community, it got people talking about nudist selfies. Mm -hmm. Basically, people, I mean, a selfie is, for those who may not know, it's just when you take your camera and you hold it out from yourself and you just take a picture of yourself. Right. And the iPhone or, or devices make it easy now because with digital camera, you can click a little button and you turn the camera so that it's looking at you instead of away. So... You don't have to, like, turn your camera around to, like, face the lens at you. But um, anyway, we, in talking about nudist selfies, um, this other blogger, he's, his name is Home Close Free on Twitter, uh, he wrote this blog about nudist selfies and what you shouldn't do and advice. And he was, like, things like, don't take it to the bathroom because it's, it's, like, a really overdone yes. photo of people hold their phone up to the mirror and take this selfie of themselves. And it's usually very clearly, like, they, they want to show off how good they look. Yes, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. With harsh and, lighting. Um, yeah. Um, and he, but he also had other advice that only applies to um, nudists, which is, like, don't take crotch shots. I know. But, um, what is it with that? It's especially guys who you see that in like you know discussion forums and their their profile picture is a penis is a penis picture. Like I I, yes. I I know we're cool about all that, but when you put all the focus just on a penis, it starts to get away from the totality of the person and just becomes about the sex again. Yeah, exactly. It's really weird. I mean, not even just that though. I mean, I think of um, <laughs> these pictures that. You know the the social network True Nudist. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys, um, there's like this very typical shot. Like I've seen it so many times, and a lot of a lot of men do it. Mostly older men, because I think it is mostly older men on that website. But <laughs> I'll try to describe it. They are um, sitting down, or like maybe they're laying on a bed, and their torso is like reclining. And their legs are kind of spread open. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> it's like the focus of the picture is very clear. Yes. Yeah, I've <laughs> and seen. It's I've like seen. Uh, super. I just don't understand why they take this picture. I don't understand what the, it's like. Is it like, like Jordan thinks it's like, look at me, I am man. You know, like I have a penis and. I know it's 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 like they're flashing in some cases. It's it's either that shot on the bed which I've seen. Or sitting in the chair, it was just you know with their legs spread, it's and and just full f dead on picture. I mean, it's, they're just they're unimaginative at at best, you know. They like that, yeah. That's not how you take a good picture, dressed or nude. It it just doesn't work. It just looks blah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying to understand like what goes through their mind. Like, are they purposely trying to show off their crotch? Or did, do they think it really looks good? 
I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe we'll find out when we if we ask our community what the mentality behind it is. I mean, it's also like, it's not even just, okay, you want to, like, show off your crotch, but it's also, like, super awkward. Like, if you're on there for dating and you're trying to get women, yeah, I'm pretty sure most are not going to be enticed by your crotch. Well, does it work on you? No, no, not so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how Jordan got you then. Yes, yes, that's how he got me. Actually, yes, it was a it was a really hot crap shot. On <laughs> <laughs> well, so in your blog post, are you gonna give the guy some advice on how to take good pictures? I guess so, but it's like I'm not sure that that it's real nudists who are like taking, if, you know, to, to say like don't take a picture of your penis and use that as your profile picture. It's pretty obvious to a real nudist like I, I don't know maybe maybe it's not like maybe it's well if my penis is not erect then it's not a sex picture it's just a picture of my beautiful penis yeah. <laughs> yes well and you know maybe maybe it's just such a novelty for some that you know it's their first time out if you will and so that's what they think they need to focus on because that's what they've had to hide all their life. I don't know. That that maybe yeah. I, I've never asked, but I know exactly the pictures you're talking about, and it's always oh, been I'm so good. Yeah. like what the heck, you know? Yeah, because they're everywhere. It's, it's a phenomenon, yeah. or it's an exhibitionist thing, also probably. Yes. In some cases. Yeah, so good. Well, I look forward to reading a blog post. And uh, how is the new website running, by the way? Everything going well? Yeah, everything's going well. Um, we're still working out a few issues with our new forum. Um, but, yeah, everything's everything's going pretty good. Good. And any upcoming activities you want to tell people about? Um, no, not so far. Um, hopefully, you know, the holidays get to be a pretty busy time. Um, so we're looking to do stuff in, like, January, February. Okay, well, we'll keep looking, uh, keep on the calendar of uh, well, Young Naturist America, and hopefully we'll f see some really exciting stuff in the near future. Yes, definitely. I recently uh, saw an article about a new show on TLC called Buying Naked. Um, and so I recorded and watched the first two episodes, as far as I can tell from their website, there's only been two episodes, and I guess maybe if it's popular, they might do more. Um, TLC, of course, uh, stands for the Learning Channel. Well, maybe you don't know, because it's been a long time since they've changed to just plain TLC, but it was originally called the Learning Channel. I think they've strayed f pretty far from that with all of their reality shows, uh, which is probably why they don't call themselves the Learning Channel anymore. They just call themselves TLC. This particular show is about a realtor in Pasco County, Florida. Um, for those people around the world who don't know, Pasco County is an area of Florida that has more uh, naturist or nudist uh, resorts, communities, than I think probably anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, that's where Caliente is, which, of course, uh, is not necessarily nudist because of the uh, swinger parties and swinger elements, although it was initially built as a nudist place. Um, you have uh, Lake Como, very close by. Um, you have Paradise Lakes, uh, which has also been criticized for some of their uh, racy parties in the past, but it's still a, a huge resort with uh, wonderful amenities you expect in a resort like Caliente. Um, and then you have smaller clubs, and then you have um, residential communities that have been built. Uh, in one case, with uh, they share a backyard um, that is naturist but the front is public street so you can have people come over without having to drive through the gates of a nudist resort so jackie youngblood is a uh, she says she's a naturist or a nudist actually everybody's using the term nudist down there um although in the show she's always dressed but she says she's a nudist and uh, she is uh, an expert in selling real estate in those areas to nudists so this is all about selling it to nudists and it is um well, you know, reality shows may be called reality shows, but they're not reality. Uh, as I know, I, I did a show 
uh, where w- w- they renovated my kitchen, one of those renovation shows, and I was nude, and a lot of the actions were scripted. Um, when uh, I was wor- doing work on the house with the uh, hosts, we would start, and we would film, then we'd do a little chatter that was somewhat scripted, and then we'd stop, and the people who actually did the real work would come in and finish the job properly, sometimes fix the job we'd done improperly in the first place. So reality is not so real, and clearly this is not that real either. Um, first of all, there is... Uh, well, let me just play the clip so you can hear the introduction of it, and I'll give you an idea of the style and the tone. People who want to go new, and there's lots of them, they come to Pasco County, Florida. It is the nudist capital of the world. There's over a dozen clothing optional communities in this area. And when people want to buy nudist real estate, they come to me. I've already sold over 25 homes to nudists this year. Top that. Nudists don't wear clothes. However, when it comes to money, they have deep pockets. I have this adorable newlywed couple, Mike and Hillary who are just getting into this nudist lifestyle. I'm really not sure if they know what they're getting into. I'm gonna have to explain to them some of the etiquette that goes along with being a nudist. So that should be fun. Hello and good morning. You must be Hillary. Hi. Okay, come on guys, let's take a look at the master suite. Okay. All right, this is nice. This room might be a little small, but I think it's something that we can work with. Come on in, take a look at this, Hillary. No way. This is fantastic. It's important to have big closets because I do go to work. Michael goes to work, too. And I have a lot of shoes. (laughs) Come on out and take a look at this. Holy crap, Jackie. Wow. This is like an oasis. Oh man, this is perfect. Mike, check this out. (laughs) This is seriously like what I've been looking for. It was a mini nudist resort in our own backyard. Look at the dipping pool. That is Get up in the morning and walk out here and get in it. You can come over, turn on the misters here. Oh wow, look at that. This is definitely a bonus. You have your bar here. Oh, this is my dream come true right here. Look at this. Any and everything you want right here at your fingertips. We can have parties, make drinks. (laughs) Here at Mike's Bar, no shirt, no shoes, no problem. So as they take the uh, prospective buyers around, um, they must have spent a huge amount of time shooting scenes with objects in the way of nipples and penises and uh, groins in general. Um, Jackie, of course, is always dressed, which seems really odd to me <laughs> because the prospective couple that's buying the house in both shows, that there's two different couples, uh, are nude all the time and seem to want to be nude all the time, which is great. Um, but we know that even in these resorts people are more clothing optional um and so they might just as well be dressed as well and if the realtor was dressed i might be dressed but it's all about the shock value it's all about the funny stuff it's comedy um even the rules they stop every now and then putting and and have these they freeze the scene and they have these nudist rules so that people can learn all about the rules about nudism like Nudist rule number 41, nudist proof your dog by filing down their nails. Yeah. And uh, nudist rule 14, avoid tan lines or people will know you're a newbie nudist. Um, this one is, you know, nudist rule 56 comes after a comment about the counters being too low. I'm not sure why any naturist or nudist would say this, but they did. And so nudist rule 56, kitchen countertops should be higher than your genitalia. And, and you know, that's what they're playing on people's gross out factors who are in the textile world who are just imagining you know penises being flopped onto counters um as you're doing work or something like that and then the in one other part the uh the prospective buyer suggests that the uh stove is a little too close to the island which when you look at the it's a just fairly normal and it says nudist rule number 32 keep your body parts a safe distance from hot stove because the uh 
the perspective buyer says, from a nudist point of view, the distance between the stove and the island is a little close. I mean, really? I mean, they're houses. They're, that's all they are. Um, yes, they're in a naturist environment, and that's great that they people are doing it. I guess ultimately any show that seems... Um, to be normalizing the idea that you can be nude and live nude is great because it normalizes the idea that the body is something you can get used to and not something to be offended by or ashamed or embarrassed by. Although these two couples are in very good shape and are very young. Uh, one in particular his, uh, must work out a lot because he is very muscular. Um, so they're certainly not necessarily your average American uh, for being in the U.S. And... Uh, they don't talk about the philosophy. They don't talk about naturism. They certainly don't talk about ethical naturism. They don't talk about a lot of those psychological, emotional, and physical benefits of, of naturism and the, the nature aspect. But to be fair, they say nudism. And if anything, this show has convinced me more and more that we do need to make a difference, as Europe does, between nudist and naturist and ethical naturist and i'll put a link again to that show where we talk about that and to a web page uh where i've written out the differences in the definition between uh being a plain nudist and being an ethical naturist i'll put that in the show notes But uh, while I was on the Bare Necessity cruise in uh, uh, last February, February of 2013, I did meet April Genter. She also specializes in, in doing real estate in the uh, Pasco County and doing real estate for nudists in Pasco County. And uh, I had done an interview with her while I was on the cruise because I thought that was an interesting topic. I hadn't quite figured out where to use it and which show, but with this TV show on TLC coming out, that seemed like a perfect uh, introduction and a perfect uh, combination with this interview. So without any further to do, here's my interview and discussion with April Genter. My name is April Genter, and I'm from Florida, born and raised in the Tampa Bay area. And I sell real estate in nudist communities in Florida. A nudist real estate agent. Now, that's a real specialty. How did you come about to be uh, to do that? Well, I actually used to work in a club resort back in the early 90s till about 2005. And I left the hospitality industry uh, in nude recreation for nudist resorts and wound up uh, getting involved in real estate, which was something I had wanted to do for quite some time and I started out selling property on the waterfront and then we had the, a crash in the market and it uh, people had continued to ask me that had property in nudist communities if I would list their property so I decided that, that made a whole lot of sense uh, and decided to focus on helping nudists uh, live their dream to live life nude. So it sounds like the uh, nudist real estate market actually did better uh, in the recession than regular properties. Initially, this is true. And historically, nudist real estate uh, would sell at about 30% more than properties on the outside in textile communities. And that was pretty historic, uh, a trend that we saw in uh, Pasco County. When I got into selling real estate in 2006, when the market crashed, and I started selling inland in 2000 mid-2006, 2007, I noticed that property values were not coming down in Paradise Lakes, at Caliente, uh, at the woods, at uh, Paradise Pines. And it was fascinating to me to see that people were still paying a premium in 2007, 2008, 2009 in the nudist uh, real estate market. Now, we did have a few short sales, just like all communities, and there were a few uh, bank foreclosures, but it wasn't extreme because a lot of people that buy real estate in the nudist market pay cash. So that's interesting. So the real estate market is a better investment and obviously and more stable uh, for uh, nudists. And so what is nudist real estate? What, what, what are you selling? Are they just houses? Well, in the nudist culture, you have a lot of different uh, types of living situations because some people actually live uh, their life traveling in an RV. We actually have communities that focus on people that 
uh, like to travel and stay in Florida maybe four to six months out of the year, so they'll bring their RV. So you do have communities set up that sell lots for RV use and uh, fifth wheels. Um, some of these communities allow you to put a park model on the lot. And then there are other communities that have condominiums, townhomes, villas for people who prefer not to have to do a lot of the maintenance. Some of these communities will offer a condominium so that, you know, you're responsible for the the drywall in to the home, but you're not responsible for the replacement of the roof, for the pressure washing of the building, or in the painting of the building. So these situations, this type of living, enables somebody that uh, wants to live full-time in the north or in another country, and they come down maybe three months out of the year, four months out of the year, they don't have as much to have to worry about. They don't have to worry about mowing a lawn and uh, worrying about uh, pressure washing the home if it needs pressure washing. So condos are, are, are a nice option for someone who doesn't want a lot of maintenance. We do have single-family homes in at least four of the nudist communities in Pasco. And I guess I should qualify that uh, in Pasco County, there are 11 nudist communities. And it's considered the uh, uh, probably the largest concentration of nudists live in Pasco County, Florida. And perhaps one of the reasons is due, be, due to the fact that we have such great weather so many months out of the year. And I personally sell real estate just in Florida because I'm licensed in the state of Florida. Uh, there are agents that sell real estate in Michigan or, you know, in New York. But there are so many places to live in Pasco County. That's my focus. I, I work the tri-county area, Hillsborough County, Pasco County, and Pinellas County. I find that a lot of nudists would like to live close to the resort, but maybe not necessarily in the resort environment because perhaps they have family that are coming to visit regularly. So they, some people may opt to live on the outside. But that was another interesting thing that I found about the nudist culture is many people would buy a little vacation condo in a nudist community and then buy a house within a mile outside for the rest of their family and relatives. So I found that really interesting. Uh, one couple I knew had a house in Caliente built and a house just outside of Caliente in a community called Magnolia Point. And these are hu huge homes. Some of them are uh, 2,800 square feet and 4,000 square feet inside the nudist uh, community of Caliente. So it's very interesting to me that uh, some people had that kind of uh, cash to be able to own inside and outside. Now there are a, there is a hybrid nudist community that was built about 12 years ago. I think the inception of the concept came together. And uh, there were two realtors that sold real estate in a community outside of Paradise Lakes they were selling townhomes, and they it was not a nudist community, but they kept finding in the early 90s that all these people that were buying there uh, were members of Paradise Lakes or Lake Como, which also is a nudist community. Uh, Lake Como was established in the, in the 1940s, so it was the first nudist community in Florida, uh, and that community consists of mobile homes, RV lots, park models, and they do have a camping area. Now, Going back to this community where these two realtors were selling pre-construction townhomes, uh, one of the common factors when they'd ask nudists why they were buying on the outside, uh, some would say, well, I I'm, I'm still uh, have family that would be coming down regularly, and or I'm still in a profession where I have to entertain at home, and uh, it, I, they, my clients might feel uncomfortable coming to a nudist place, so they, they didn't have the freedom and the flexibility to live on the inside. So these two gentlemen decided to get together and develop a community for people who wanted to live life nude but not have their guests or family uh, relatives be exposed to nudism. So they built a hybrid nudist community in Pasco County, which comprised of 28 lots, and people built executive-style homes on those lots. And a guest, a business association, associate could come into the community and not see a nudist because no one is allowed to be nude in the front yard but you can be nude in your fenced backyard so all the lots have private backyards 
and all 28 homes have access to the private nude clubhouse. Uh, this community has not been seen by a lot of nudists because you can't pay for a day fee. It's not like a resort where you can pay grounds fees for the day and come and enjoy all the pools and the hot tubs and the restaurants and the dancing, nightclubs, etc. In this environment, they have their own gym, they have tennis courts, they have their pool and hot tub and a clubhouse, uh, but only uh, residents and their guests have access to the common area. So uh, some of the places you are uh, selling in are private businesses, um, like Lake Como. What is your relationship then when you are selling, an, I guess not really the property, you're selling uh, a trailer or a house on a lot, but the lot is actually owned by the private corporation. So how does that work? Well, that's interesting that you brought that up because Lake Como, technically you don't own the land. That's a unique nudist community in that People buy shares. There are two communities in Pasco County where instead of buying the land, you buy a share in the land. And Como is considered a co-op community. So all the residents are actual owners. And what's dynamic about that concept is that when you see the residents coming out in droves to support an event, for instance, they have a very popular sand volleyball tournament. And people come from all over the country in Canada to play in the sand volleyball tournament, which is held uh, later this year. I believe it's late March. Uh, and there will be, uh, I think it's a nine-day tournament. And people will come in with their RVs, their park models. The campsites are filled up. But all the residents, since they own the club, it's a nonprofit situation, so all the residents participate in various volunteer efforts throughout the weekend, like you'll have people helping to guide people to go park. You'll have people serving up free corn on the cob or whatever they do that day because they'll have a lot of different activities and they have games for people to play throughout the weekend. And it's just amazing, the volunteer effort, when you have a, a, a club a community where it's not for profit, everybody owns a share, uh, and so you tend to find prices on liquor in the restaurants a lot cheaper, <laughs> but uh, they have done an ex excellent job maintaining the club area. Now, I, I don't generally sell real estate in Como because they don't have tax ID numbers on the lots, so it's hard to track the sales, and when you're a real estate agent, buyers tend to expect you to be able to show them all the recent comps and show them what everything else is sold for so they can make an informed uh, decision as to what to pay when they're making an offer on, on a property. But uh, I have so, uh, sold uh, a place in uh, Como, and I, Como has my heart. It's a great community. I love it. We do sponsor events there. Uh, Paradise Lakes, Caliente, those specific resort communities, residents do buy and get, uh, when they buy their property, they do get a tax ID number. They don't share in the profits of the club owner resort. Uh, they run the, the business for profit. Now, Como and Paradise and Caliente, all those communities are resort communities, so they do collect day fees. So if somebody wanted to come out to the resort for the day to Lake Como or Paradise Lakes or Caliente, they can pay a day fee uh, and come out for the day and sun and, and see what these resort communities have to offer. They're all very diverse. All three of these clubs are very large communities. At least one of the communities is at least 85 acres, and then it goes up from there. At Lake Como, they have a beautiful lake, and they have sailboats, small sailboats, because it's not a huge lake. You probably look, it may be a 70-acre lake, but it's a nice lake where people can take a catamaran out or a little john boat paddle boat and you can get out for a few hours and enjoy cruising on the lake or just paddle boating they do have paddle boats there uh, they have a wonderful restaurant called uh, the oh, it's, uh, Butt Hut is actually called the restaurant the, 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 night, the little bar is called the Butt Hut but uh, the, the Bear Buns Cafe is the restaurant and they're separate uh, this community has a lot of nature trails uh, they have a wonderful uh, tennis court area, beautiful clay tennis courts, which they resurfaced last year. And they have tennis tournaments there 
uh, regularly, and they have a 5K run that's very popular. Now, Paradise Lakes is a community of condominiums, townhomes, vacation condos, cabanas, park models, single-family homes, and RV lots. So you have an extensive variety of types of real estate. The condominiums, you can buy a studio for that's about 380 square feet or a little vacation condo that's only 456 square feet. So a condo like that, a lot of people will tend to put into the rental pool. Some people will live in them full time, but uh, they're perfect and ideal for people who may want to come visit three or four months out of the year and they can keep it for themselves or they can put them back in the rental pool. And there are quite a few people that manage rental properties. Uh, Paradise Lakes, actually, sadly, uh, about a year ago, I think the owner uh, passed away and his uh, wife was left with it. And there was a question whether she was going to sell it. So do you know what the status is of Paradise Lakes? No, actually, uh, his uh, fiance passed away as well. Uh, John Foyer died in a horrible car accident in uh, Texas. And she was in a tragic accident as well. And she died two weeks later of complications. His daughters inherited the property and that they decided that they would put it on the market and they focused their focus uh, and they expressed this in the nudist publications that they wanted to sell the resort to somebody that was uh, conscientious of our membership and our nudist culture. So they wanted to sell it to somebody that was passionate about our nudist culture and continue, obviously, to maintain it as a nudist resort destination. A couple bought it, uh, Jerry and Pat, and they bought it back in September, and they have been sinking a lot of money back into the resort. We're seeing a, they've been resurfacing the pools, they're fixing, there were some leaks in one of the hot tubs, and they've been working on that. Uh, they, the, they've been doing, creating all kinds of fun activities, and they're drawing in a good crowd. Um, I would like to make mention that a resort may be separate in the way it's managed than the homeowners associations. And for instance, in Paradise Lakes, there's six or seven different homeowners associations. Because it was built in stages, Paradise, the original phase of Paradise, the condos were built in 1991 and 1992. So you have a homeowners association that manages the funds that are spent on the roads in that phase of the resort and the common area. So if you were an owner of one of the condos or the single-family homes or mobile home in the original phase of Paradise, you pay a fee every month that covers the grounds, the common areas. And uh, what I've found fascinating about Paradise Lakes and this phase, uh, the original phase of Paradise, is that in times of trouble, this particular community actually had quite a substantial money in reserves. And I was very impressed because there are, a lot of, there are condominium communities where uh, some communities found maybe a high percentage of homes for sale and, and uh, maybe some people fell into hard times and they couldn't pay their homeowners association dues. This particular community uh, it was one of the most impressive, well-managed HOAs I've seen as far as the money that they had in reserves, uh, Maybe three to four people were behind on their HOA dues, which is phenomenal for a community that has over 200 or 280 properties to manage. I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's around 240 or 280 in that phase. And only three or four people being delinquent on HOA dues is unheard of uh, in condominium communities. And they uh, have a tendency to put the money back out there where you can see it. Like a few years ago, they built a beautiful dock on the lake for the residents to enjoy. They put in 10 fun and sun spots, and that didn't, there was no special assessment for that. They used these funds to put uh, pavers in different, at different, near different condos uh, where people could bring out barbecue grills and, and patio furniture and stuff. So let's say, for instance, a, a friend was coming to visit for three hours, and they didn't want to pay grounds fees to go to the resort for the day, which could cost you $48. Uh, so you could come visit your friend and be nude in front of their condominium at a fun and sun spot and have a barbecue without having to pay grounds fees to go to the resort. If you're only coming to visit for a few hours, you could come directly to your friend's place to visit. 
You, um, do you only do real estate in Pasco County or all over Florida? Would you do, for example, houses in Cypress Cove? Well, I could sell in, in Kissimmee because I'm licensed in the state of Florida. I would generally refer out to another agent that's more familiar with another area. It, nudist real estate is a little different than, than ordinary real estate because I understand the needs of what a nudist is looking for for privacy, and I try to keep apprised of what's going on in the other nudist communities. But generally, I stay in my tri-county area because I'm familiar with the subdivisions and people have very different needs if they're looking to buy on the outside. But uh, And it's a drive. It's about an hour and 20-minute drive for me to go to, to Cyprus. But um, I would consider helping someone uh, find the perfect property in Cypress Cove, but I, I do try to stay in the Tri-County area. And, and how are nudists different as clients? What, what are their uh, unique peculiarities or things they, they ask you for? Well, I'd like to qualify that if you're buying real estate and you want to be nude in your backyard, in a nudist neighborhood, they're zoned for social nudism, so the county has given permission and permitting for a developer to build in a nudist community, they had to go for proper permitting. And so you know that you safely can be nude in your backyard. For anyone who's buying in a non-nudist environment, in a textile environment, even if you feel the safe security of you've created privacy hedges and stuff, technically it's not zoned for nudism. But a lot of people look to find, if they can't and they don't have the privilege of living in a nudist community, you help them find a home that has privacy in the backyard, lots of hedging or some in, in, in vegetation surrounding the property so that if they're walking nude in their home with their wind, their drapes open, they, they won't be exposing themselves to the neighbors in the area. So you try to help them find something that can create some extra confidence that they they wouldn't be exposing themselves. But there is no guarantee that, uh, you know, somebody <laughs> flies overhead in a little ultralight or something with binoculars. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you also, uh, some people, maybe they only want to live six miles from a resort. Uh, so you find, uh, you, you help it. If somebody's from uh, Michigan and they don't really know the area and they're trying to search online and they're Googling or they're going to realtor.com, they, they might find communities that are 80 miles from their, the resort that they're going to be using every day. Because many people who buy a membership to a resort, they're going to come to the club four or five days a week. They're gonna be, maybe they'll be committed to playing water volleyball from 1 to 11 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe they play pool in the pool tournaments every day and they want to be there at 5.30 to play pool. Maybe they like to play tennis early in the morning and they want to get their tennis in from 8 to 9 before they go to work. So there's a lot of activities in the nudist communities. Uh, you have Zumba classes and yoga classes at a lot of these locations and a lot of these resorts offer water volleyball, I mean uh, water aerobics classes. So uh, people have routines and a number of these clubs have gyms. So uh, people like to be close to the resort, but maybe they don't want to drive 20 minutes or a half hour. So we help people relocate to uh, neighborhoods that is fitting to where they want to be close to. And why do you think the naturist uh, or nudist real estate market survived the recession so well? What's, what's the difference? Well, a lot of nudists or, and a lot of people that are buying in nudist communities, ha- perhaps... These homes are not their primary residence for some. They're resort homes or vacation homes. So people that financially survived the crash, the economic uh, recession, people that have survived that who can afford a vacation home are still buying in the nudist community. So these are resort environments, and you, have a, you do have a, a, a large group of nudists that uh, maybe they're in their retirement years or they're planning for their retirement. In fact, a lot of buyers that I saw in the last three years were buyers that were planning for retirement. They wanted to retire in Florida and maybe they're three to five years out from retiring or eight years out from retiring. But the fact that the prices were lower in recent years on interest for taking out a loan and property values did come down to compete with real estate on the outside because 
one thing we did see, which I think did affect the nudist market, but only in the last couple of years, uh, I did mention at the beginning that in 2006, 2007, property values had not come down. There was, there, it was impressive that they were staying uh, where they, you know, at, at an impressive uh, uh, 30% above re uh, textile. But in uh, about 2010, 2011, we did see prices come down in the nudist communities because people could buy so much home on the outside, it was almost, it was difficult for some to pay a higher premium inside. For instance, at Caliente, there were homes in a subdivision right outside that were selling for half the price, less than half the price of a house built in a nudist community. So when you look at the, that and you say, wow, I could buy a 2,800 square foot house for $220,000, or I can buy a 2,800 square foot house in Caliente for 500000 hmm, gosh, I could afford a lifetime membership to Paradise Caliente and Como and still buy the house. So that's, where we, that's when we started seeing prices come down in the nudist market is when buyers who are very savvy look to the outside and say, well, hmm, maybe I could live on the outside and just drive over every day. So that's when we saw some changes. Now, we are starting to see, because prices did come down, people who never could afford to live in places like Paradise before, because back when I got in the market in 2006, a little vacation condo that was only 456 square feet, uh, they were selling for 90000 to 105000 And one guy actually bought one for 109000 That's a lot of money for only 456 square feet of living space. So people, that was, that's, well, that was extravagant spending for many. So when the prices came down in, in around 2010, people who never could ever a, a dream of owning in a nudist resort now finally had their chance. So we have found quite a few people purchasing because prices have come down. And right now in Paradise Alone, this month, there's about 17 agents I know that work our nudist market. There, anybody can sell who's licensed in the state of Florida, real estate in our nudist culture. But there's about 17 of us that's, that really focus on our nudist market. And I know of 12 contracts pending at Paradise Lakes alone this month. That's fantastic. So if somebody is interested in taking advantage because the prices are still decent right now, how do they get in contact with you? Well, they can come to my website or they can give me a call and my number is 813-230-4851 again 813-230-4851 or they can also look me up on my website sun s-u-n bathers plural b-a-t-h-e-r-s clubs plural c-l-u-b-s Dot com, and they can click to my my uh, name where it says contact us, April Genter, and I have an email address. And they can put the request in, and type up their request of what they're looking for, and I'll be happy to contact them. And as usual, I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well for anybody who's interested. Well, that's all once again for this episode of the Naturist Living Show. Thank you for listening. My name again is Stéphane Deschaines. I'm your host for this podcast. I'm the owner of Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. And you can find links to all the things I mentioned in the show in the show notes on our show website, which is located at naturistliving, one word, dot bearoaks, dot ca. That's B-A-R-E, Bear Oaks, of course, and dot ca because we are in Canada. And so we read a number of comments in the show, and so I keep uh, reading them all, and I do appreciate getting them, so please keep sending the comments and suggestions. The show's email address is naturistliving at bareoaks.ca, B-A-R-E, bareoaks.ca, because we're in Canada. Join us again in about a month for the next episode of The Naturist Living Show. This episode of The Naturist Living Show was brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. Traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Traditional values means that naturism is more than just taking your clothes off. It is a life philosophy with physical, psychological, environmental, social and moral benefits. 
Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park strives to promote those naturist values in a modern setting that provides the amenities and services that our members and visitors expect. Free your body, free your mind. Learn more at www.bearoaks.ca. We hope you enjoyed this video. As we said at the beginning, podcasts are much more convenient when you subscribe and listen on a podcast app. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, Deezer, Overcast, and many, many other places. Please visit naturistlivingshow.com for more information on how to subscribe. 